To illustrate my style and approach, I'm now going to explain operational gearing. However, before I do so, I should perhaps point out where this might feature in a course to put it into context. I want you to assume, therefore, that discussion has already taken place on the following. What is meant by sales margin and how this is calculated? The different types of cost, specifically the difference between fixed cost and variable costs. And also break-even and contribution analysis. So this is where I will pick up the presentation and say, as we've already seen, it is important to know what a product costs to make. However, it is equally important to know the cost mix, the relationship between fixed cost and variable costs. I'd like you, therefore, to have a look at this slide. This particular business has a lot of variable costs compared with what it spends on fixed costs. Variable costs are things like material costs, fixed costs, things like buildings, people, machinery. So looking at the base figures, you can see that the total cost of the business at $2,750, of which $2,000 are variable and $750 fixed. In the period, the business sold 250 units at a selling price of $12 a unit, giving us revenue of $3,000. Take away the total cost of 2750, that leaves us with a surplus or profit of $250, which equates to a sales margin of 8.3%. That's the operating surplus, the 250, as a percentage of the revenue figure, the 3000. In other words, for every 100 pounds worth of goods or services sold, the operating profit was $8.30. We now have a look and see what would happen if there's a change in demand. First of all, if demand increased by 10%. So that's an extra 25 units. The revenue goes up to 3.3, the total cost to 2950. Now we're making an assumption here that that extra 10% more work could have been done without taking on additional resources such as people or machinery. So the fixed costs remain the same at 750. However, we will need another 10% of input materials. That's why the variable costs have gone up from $2,000 to $2,200. Operating surplus has risen to 350, which equates to a sales margin of 10.6. If, however, demand falls by 10% from the base figure, look what happens to the sales margin then. It drops to 5.6. In other words, for every $100 of sales, the operating profit is now $5.60. Two figures I want you to pay a particular attention to, if you will, are the 10.6 the and the 5.6. In other words, a spread of 5% between a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. Now we're going to have a look and see what would happen if the cost mix was the other way around. In this case, the fixed costs amount to $2,000 and the variable costs to $750. Total cost is still the same at $2,750. So our base figures still show a sales margin of 8.3. But look what happens when, first of all, demand increases by 10%. The margin has now gone up to 14.4. In other words, for every $100 of sales, the operating profit is now $14.40. More significantly, though, is what happens when demand falls by 10%. $100 of sales is now producing only $0.90 cents of operating profit. You also need to bear in mind that out of that $0.90, cents, the business may have to pay interest on loans. 
it has to reward the shareholders by paying them a dividend, and it also has to make provision for the future, not to mention any tax it may have to pay. Clearly, that level of profit would make the business as unsustainable. So what can we do then to protect ourselves from this scenario? That is what we're going to consider in the next session. First of all, what impact a fall of 10% in demand would have and how we can react to it, what steps we need to take. In the meantime, you might like to have a look at the cost rate.